All right, so that is President John Dramani Mahama, and um, he was in Parliament earlier today to address the country, which was his final State of the Nation address, telling us what he's been able to achieve, where he's brought the country to, and what he's expecting the incoming administration to also do, uh, saying that he ran his lap and is expecting uh, President-elect Nanado Dankwa Kufado to also continue from where he has left off, especially with issues regarding uh, development and infrastructure, and then also issues of energy. And we're going to energy next because uh, the President, John Dramani Mahama, said that under his administration, he managed to stabilize the energy crisis and was able to add some 800 megawatts of power to the national grid. And uh, he, he, he also indicated that in the process to access the electricity under his tenure, uh, he managed to increase the total capacity of the country by some 80%. So let's listen exactly to what the president said. Then we would come in studio to do some analysis. But, uh, uh, well, before we hear what the president said, let's come in studio and speak to um, uh, an energy expert, uh, we want to call him so. And uh, he's actually um, one person you've seen quite a number of times here on, t on, on TV3 because of his expertise when it comes to energy. Mr. Kojo Nsafwa Poku. Hi, Martin. How are you? Very well, happy thank you. Year. Many happy returns, my brother. Seen you this year. Yes, good to see you, and uh, thank you for making the time to join us. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you listened extensively to the president, but right. we would want to focus on the energy bit. Okay. To start with, has he really delivered to the country what he promised because top of my mind i remember i think his last state of the nation address he said i john dramani mahama i will fix it has he been able to fix it no um he said he was going to fix it has he fixed it completely no has he done some work yes you know when this energy problem started it was infrastructure we didn't have enough um, installed capacity. So the focus was to now get in a lot of generation capacity, which that was the drive that now brought in the car power and a lot of the T1, T2 mm -hmm. were converted to combined cycles. And the, I think CNET in uh, the Pond area was also built. Then the Ameri, controversial Ameri mm -hmm. came up. Then there were a lot of you know, drive to get Akusumbu working as well, doing some um, refurbishment here mm. and there. Mm. Then the problem went from it being just an infrastructure problem to a full source problem because of our indebtedness to Ghana um, and gas, gas and also and we know we don't only owe and gas. We owe Ghana gas as well. Okay. So people keep talking about indebtedness to only Nigerian gas. Mm. Ghana gas also has we its share of debt to, to um, VRA. Well, well, so well, the problem now moved on from just being infrastructure to become full. So it's multifaceted. Yeah. It's a bit dynamic. And then also the financial component. Of yes. Uh, we yeah. would come to that. For now, though, let's listen exactly to what the president said. Then we would come in studio to finalize this analysis. The early years of this government was characterized by a crippling power crisis. The shortage of power led to a very unpopular load management program. This shortage of power hobbled the growth of our economy and affected both business and residential customers. Many businesses had to resort to the use of generators to survive. I stood on the floor of this very August house and took full responsibility for the crisis and promised that I'll do my utmost to fix the problem. It has taken a lot of hard work and effort fast-tracking the deployment of emergency plans and speeding up the completion of ongoing plans ensured that we added more than 800 megawatts of power over an 18-month period. This increased generation in addition to the energy sector levy and ongoing works to restructure the legacy debt of the power utilities has helped to stabilize the power situation in our country. With the expectation of more domestic gas from the Ten and Sankofa fields, Ghana is entering into an era of energy self-sufficiency. Indeed, the warning signals have started sounding about the danger of overcapacity and excess redundancy in our power generation sector. We have agreed to work with the World Bank to rationalize the addition of new plants and ensure that we achieve optimum utilization of existing plant capacity. Ghana has one of the highest access to el electricity, estimated to be above 80% currently. Yeah. Additional pending electrification programs like the China Water Company Program and the Hunan Energy Projects 
will bring even more communities onto the national grid. All right, so that's uh, President John Dramani Mahama, minutes ago in Parliament. We still have with us um, uh, Mr. Kujun Safapoku, who is an energy expert. We want to be sure of uh, what the President has said and how that uh, can dovetail into the incoming administration's um, tenure, which begins in the next few days. The President mentioned I issues regarding, the, and, and you also touched on it, the fact that they had put in enough infrastructure for the country to run with. Um, do you think that we have enough foundation, he has been able to lay enough foundation for the current administration to take off? Yes, the foundation has been laid. In terms of now, even if we are to have a shortfall, we wouldn't be more than 300 megawatts shortfall, depending on what Akosombo gives you. Because, you know, the biggest problem is Akosombo. Because okay. Akosombo itself, when it's full and well and run, is 1,000 megawatts. When Akosombo is around 600, it means that now, depending on what your safety net is in terms of your redundancy, if you look at that 15% that we talk of that look, for you to have that leverage, like, mm. because you might have maintenance here, maintenance there. So that wiggle room, you're looking at about 2,400 uh, megawatts installed capacity available okay. to you so that you can call some at base and um, not call some at base whenever you need it. But now, if you look at all that we have, we are hovering around 1,000, 6,800, depending on what Akosombo is bringing in. Okay. Yes, they've laid the foundation, but that problem, like I said earlier, is dynamic. We're now facing a full problem instead of infrastructure problem. Because if you get enough gas from the West African Gas Pipeline, mm. you've paid your indebtedness, and you can negotiate for better pressure in the pipeline, then Asogli can work. Okay? okay, and then most of CNET can work. That's about 110. So there alone, you are getting something for the Thermal Enclave. If you don't get anything from West African Gas Pipeline, it means the Thermal Enclave cannot work. Then you're only left with the Abwazi Enclave, mm. which is Ghana Gas. We all know of the pending um, maintenance to FPSO somewhere in March, April. Yes. So that is also nagging. The, the, the issue of um, fueling then dovetails to issues of financing. Yes. Because we need money to acquire this fuel. Right. Plus, the fact that the president also mentioned that um, uh, we are expecting a lot more gas now from domestic sources, right. like the 10 fields and all. How does that sit with the incoming government? Do you think it's going to be a major burden? Well, the incoming government will have to renegotiate heavily the four costs, the, the, the gas. You see, there was a problem that we talked of some time ago. The gas that is coming from our own field mm. is more expensive than gas coming from Nigeria. Okay, the price they put on the end gas, the sorry, the ENI project, the gas that we're gonna get from the ENI project from is too from Ghana. It's too expensive. So for the why should it be so? Uh, it's it's selfish interest. Honestly, that's the blunt part of it. People negotiate. Though yes, there is an infrastructure. There's a huge. The LNG is expensive. Mm. Natural gas to be liquefied and piped into wherever you want to pipe it is called what you call liquefied natural gas. That is expensive infrastructure. But there was too much loading on mm. the pricing. Mm. So now ECG have been asked to renegotiate that pricing. Now, the thing that will disturb the income administration is that they have made trade and industry the bane of their administration. Three things that worry trade and industry. One is at higher energy cost. Two, cost to borrowing, okay? And three, maybe um, manpower and um, human, resource. human resource, okay? Quality human resource. Okay. So if you take the top two, which is energy cost. Energy cost, mm. it, unless you do something about your fuel, your generation mix, there's nothing you can do about it. So the genera for the generation cost to go down... So your advice to the incoming government would be to renegotiate... To look at the four costs that we have, renegotiate some of these pro um, agreements that we have in place, mm. like the gas on the ENI project, most of these LNG plants that are supposed to come online. We're supposed to renegotiate heavily on some of these things. Okay. And if not, we're going to have a problem because then you cannot reduce your generation cost and mm -hmm. if you don't use generation mm -hmm. cost they should forget about their uh, private sector in the industry they want to build anyway I I'm sure in the coming days we'll be falling on you and um, uh, other experts to see how the current administration can manage this problem because it is actually uh, has been the bane of the, uh, the current administration but thank you very much um, Kujo Insafwa Poko he's an energy expert and has been telling us about what he made of the president's state of the nation address specifically on energy